Welcome to the King is Dead Radio. My name is Ryan. This is a solo podcast by me. So we're going to talk about one of the basic underlying ideas behind the Genus Rex project. Critical thinking. Why do you need critical thinking? You need critical thinking because without it, anybody can shove anybody into your brain and it might stick. It could be the most perverse, stupid, wrong-headed stuff. And if you aren't able to analyze it, they're going to get away with it. And so you need to be able to assess that. The uh, Genus Rex curriculum has two basic chunks that it recommends as a starting point. One, the five levels of certain. And two, the three questions. And you can use these to be aware of when somebody's feeding you a pile of, well, dog feces. So taking a look at the start, the five levels of certain. How certain are you? So the five levels of certain are from the highest level of certainty to the lowest level of certainty. Number five, absolutely certain due to multiple sources and experimental verification from multiple people. Four, fairly certain because it's supported by experiment and evidence. Three, reasonably certain because your theory fits the available facts. Two, kind of certain, your answer makes logical sense. And one, you're not certain at all, you believe it to be true, but you don't have any evidence. And the whole point of this is not to say that you have to be absolutely certain all the time. In fact, you probably never will be. It takes a lot of work to reach our level five certainty. In order to get those multiple sources and experimental verification, that's a lot of work. Somebody else might have done it, and you might take their word for it, but in most cases in your life, you're not going to have the time, the energy, or the inclination to do this. We're going to settle for lower levels of certainty. What the five levels of certain does is it allows you to take a look at how certain am I? Because if you're a one, but you think you're a five, that's dangerous. Now, if you know you're a one, you can hedge your bets. You can be open to change and new evidence. But if you're a one and you think you're a five, you're not going to be open to evidence because you're a five. You just happen to be wrong. Likewise, you're sitting at a four and you say, okay, I've done my experiments, I've gathered my evidence, I'm pretty confident. And then somebody else says, well, I've done my experiments and I've gathered my evidence and mine contradicts yours. What you then need is another person. But you can know, okay, he's at a level four, I'm at a level four, our answers contradict. In order to find out who's right if we need to, we need additional sources. Or you might say, okay, I've... uh, I've got all the available facts that I could gather, and my theory fits it. I don't have time to go ahead and do experiments, but this will work for the moment. And then some other person might say, but I have done the experiments, and you're missing some important information, such as the results of my experiments. And you can say, oh, he's at a level four. I'm only at a level three. I should probably listen to him. He may be wrong. Reaching a certain level in your own mind doesn't mean you're actually right. This five levels of certain lets you know how certain am I, How likely am I to be wrong at this point? How confident should I be? Less pride involved. You know where you're sitting. So that's the five levels of certain. It's designed to give you a sense of where I sit. The current school system has kind of bred into us this perverse idea that we should never be wrong, that admitting that we're wrong is a horrible, bad thing. You put your hand up. Teacher says, yes, Jimmy, the answer is, and you say X, and she says, no, it's Y. And then she says, sit down, Jimmy. And then she looks to the class and says, does anyone else know the answer? Can anyone else help Jimmy out? And you just kind of crumple into your seat because you were wrong. But there's nothing wrong with being wrong. We've all heard the story. Thomas Edison was wrong, what, how many thousand times before he invented the light bulb? We find things out by being wrong. We learned about the heliocentric solar system, that is, that the Earth revolves around the sun and not vice versa, because astrolabs kept being wrong. And until they accounted for why they were wrong, they kept being wrong. So knowing your level of certain helps you gauge how likely am I to be wrong and how likely am I to have to revise my situation. There's nothing wrong with being wrong, but there's something very wrong with insisting on continuing to be wrong because you believe. You gotta get from the level one up to where you're comfortable. But if you're gonna sit at level one on a certain idea, you need to be aware that you're at a level one and know that that puts you at disadvantage when you're dealing with somebody who's at a level three or a level four or a level five. So that's the five levels of, of certain. Now to complement the five levels of certain, we have the three questions. Now the three questions are tremendously important. These are the freedom givers. 
These allow you to assess what other people say. The five levels of certain allow you to assess yourself and, as well, assess other people, but primarily they are a self-check. The three questions, although they are also a self-check, primarily have value as a check for others. The three questions are, what do you mean? How do you know? And so what? There is a lot of power in each of these questions. So the first question, what do you mean? It's all about clarity of meaning. Too often, what people do to try and sound smart, to try and sound impressive, is they'll doll up their argument, their idea, in a lot of fancy face paint. They'll make it look better than it is. They'll use fancy words, and they'll cite fictitious sources, or they'll use presuppositions. As everyone can see, and what you want to do with what do you mean is you want to cut them down to just what they are asserting. What are they trying to convince you of? Because that's the secret. And once you know what they're trying to assert, what they're trying to convince you of, then you can properly assess it. If you can't tell what they're trying to assert, then there's no value in listening to them. You need to get to an argument that is provable, verifiable, disprovable. Next, the second question. How do you know? How do you know is the ultimate little kid question, but it's an important one. It's a demand for evidence. It bothers a lot of people in authority. They want to assert things on authority because I'm your parent slash teacher slash priest slash president slash boss slash who knows, the guy who's telling you what it's going to be. Your badge slash diploma slash fancy expensive tie doesn't make you right. Hopefully, because you're frequently right, you've got that thing, but it's not the other way around. Argument from authority is a false argument, and how do you know is a demand for a real one. A good idea will have evidence to support it. A weak idea or a poorly understood idea will be supported by what are frequently called false proofs. We'll get into those, not in this episode, but later. These will include things that like appeals to tradition. Well, we've done this for a hundred years. Yes, and that doesn't make it right. Uh, yes, but I'm your father. Yes, and uh, that doesn't mean you're right. Or, everybody here believes this. Yes, and everybody used to believe the earth was flat and that the sun was uh, revolving around the earth. So, how do you know is demanding from somebody else that they be honest with you, that they be upfront, that they actually give you reasonable proof. So, number three, so what? So what is the nastiest, most powerful piece? Okay, you might have got the person to be clear. He said what he means. He might have even supported it. Now we know how he knows. He might even be right. Now the next question, so what? In other words, where's the value? Why should I care? There's nothing wrong with demanding that what's being discussed is of value. People can be trying to convince you of something as a distraction. You see it a lot in politics. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to push through something that's unpopular and <clears throat> detrimental to the people. So instead of talking about that, I'm going to try and put through some contentious but utterly non-valuable thing over here and make a big loud fuss about it in an attempt to distract people. Defend yourself against digression, against distraction, against padding. So what? Where's the value? So there you have it. The first two weapons in the arsenal of a critical thinker. The five levels of certain. How do you know when you're full of dog excrement? And the three questions. How do you know when somebody else is? And that is uh, the King is Dead radio for today. Thanks for listening and you have a great day. The King is Dead. Long live the King.